I'm Sandra D. Owens. I live in Benson, Vermont, and I am currently skiing the length of Vermont on the Catamount Trail. So I started this journey a couple years ago. I started on the Massachusetts border, and I'm going to end on the Canadian border. Um, it's a multi-winter journey for me. I call it a solo journey with friends because I reach out to the trail chiefs, who are the volunteers who keep the trail open, who are wonderful to ski with, um, because I wanted to do this journey for about 15 years, and when I finally sort of opened up some time to do it, I realized that fear of navigation, my lack of navigational skills, was really keeping me from beginning this journey. So I spent time just sort of being mindful and thinking about where that fear was coming from, and what I realized was that... Um, my my nature is is um has has a little trouble with understanding like complex written descriptions and the guidebook for the catamount trail has a very sort of simple map um it's kind of like a colored map with a line, you know, with a line indicating the trail. And it's not super detailed, um, but it sort of shows you when you're going to be sharing like a vast trail with snowmobilers and when you're in the backcountry and kind of stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's helpful, but um, I'm not like um, proficient with map and compass skills. And that's a, that's like a really big skill set that takes a long time to learn. So I realized that, you know, my fear of like getting lost was keeping me from starting this journey that I really wanted to do. So the first thing I did was I found a woman that had done the whole thing years prior and I invited her out for pizza and beer and picked her brain about everything and learned a whole lot. It was like the, the best way for me to learn because I learn, I'm a storyteller and I learn well through the spoken word. So I learned a lot from her like that. And then I reached out to another friend who is really good at orienteering and he's in like search and rescue. And um, so I spent uh, an afternoon sort of doing orienteering with him. And I realized immediately, yeah, I'm not that great at orienteering and and he's good at map and compass and so we did some map and compass skills as well and I was like no I'm not going to learn this you know like it's going to take a long time to get proficient with this I'm not going to do it so instead of beating myself up and shooting myself all the little gremlins that are in our head um in my head that sort of keep me from doing things where fear and shooting and, uh, you know, all those things that just sort of get in the way. Um, I tried to think of ways that I could work with my brain and my nature versus constantly fighting against, like, something that I don't have and I'm not going to do, you know. So I took the written descriptions that are in the guidebook that I was really unable to absorb and because they go something like this, you know, um, so, you know, drive two tenths of a mile on a CCC road and park at a pull off that may or may not be plowed and then ski um, a half a mile to the northwest until you reach a logging road and, um, you know, a beaver swamp and then turn, you know, northwest for another one tenth of a mile. You know, it was just like this is like math. My brain was just like shut down. And, you know, in, in we have so much weather. So it's like, well, those blue blazes on the tree may or may not be there. We could have had a blowdown. There may not be any tracks. Well, that logging landing might be covered in snow. It might be a blizzard. I might not be able to see. And so like having the guidebook is great, but you know, it's like, well, I have to pull out my glasses, <laughs> you know, I'm 57, I got to pull out my glasses, pull out the guidebook, you know, constantly try to orient myself. And that was what was giving me a lot of fear. And it was just an obstacle. So I took the written description on the computer and I blew up the fonts 
And then I looked at that whole page of description and I, I, I did this. I, I took line by line and got rid of all the words that no longer served me, that were just standing in the way and confusing me. And so I did these little notes, you know, just like little notes. So this one is like number one where the section starts and it says, um, behind uh, Mountaintop Ski Center, cross Mountain Spring Road, go downhill. <laughs> you know, pasture. Like that's all I need to know, you know. And then on the other side, um, enter the woods, exclamation point. And I sort of changed the fonts so my brain stays interested because color is interesting. And the really important things like turn, intersection, turn left, I made those like exclamation point. I really made them stand out. Um, I came up with like my own little color code. So a CT blaze, catamount blaze is always blue in the words. And then um, bailout, you know, if there's a bailout, again, it's sort of, they're just like quick warnings. And what I, what I found was, and so for this whole section, I have a total of five, you know, using both sides. And then I use shipping tape, covered the little notes so they're waterproof because it's always snowing or, you know, a little bit of rain or something like that. And then I just keep this little group of notes in the breast pocket of, of my jacket. So if I need to, I can pull them out. But the coolest thing happened when I did this, my brain started to absorb the information. It was so cool. It was so cool. I broke it down into these little bite-sized things, separated them, used color, worked with my brain and nature, and then there was an opening. There was space in my head because I wasn't shooting myself telling myself that I had to become good at map and compass or orienteering, which are good skills, right? But if I know I'm not going to do them, then I'm not going to do them. So I love it. I, I it just, so it really helped get rid of a lot of fear. Doesn't mean I can't get lost. There's no guarantees, but the biggest obstacle was the fear. And so the other thing that I did was I reached out to the trail chiefs and said, I'd love to ski your section with you. Would you like to? And, uh, and so the best part of that is I've met all these people who volunteer tons of time and energy to go out and um, clear their trail. So I get to thank them in person, which I really love. I make a new ski friend and I'm on the section with somebody that knows it really well. And I get to kind of share with them the perspective of a first timer where I came up with this idea called brain, brain map, which is, it's a lot like Google, right? So when you go, I'm going to travel somewhere. I don't have a GPS. So if I'm going to travel somewhere, I will go on Google maps and I will look up the thing and I see it from the air. And then when I travel there, the image of that home or that road is now in my brain. So I, I own, my brain owns it. I don't have to pull out a map and look it up. Um, and so I really want to do that with the Catamount Trail as well. For people like me who maybe learn experientially and visually and find written descriptions difficult or... Um, you know, map and compass kind of things. Like, what a great aid to upload important in, uh, images that are on a section. So, for instance, so today what I'm going to do on the section that I'm going to ski is, from a first-timer's perspective, the access points, like where you begin the section, they're often, like, super remote. They're not places that you normally drive to or you know, land on. And so just driving into the access points can be really kind of confusing. And our electronic and digital equipment doesn't always work. So if you have an image, if I have an image of the access point, 
approaching from the north and the south, the end point, access point, approaching from the north and the south, and then what I found skiing these sections for the first time is intersections and junctions where you come out of the woods and the, the written descriptions say, you know, you're going to, you know, exit the woods and then you're in a meadow. And so you're, uh, you know, cross, uh, you know, two tenths of the mile, head north, northeast, uh, go over a beaver dam, then head west, you know, northwest or something like that for, you know, quarter, you know, not even a quarter of a mile, one tenth of a mile, uh, and then do this or that. And so because it's, because you're out in nature, you can't always count on things looking like what they sound like. And so I found like whenever I exit the woods, there might be four or five different kinds of options in front of me, like a, a snowmobile trail or a skid trail or a, um, a logging road or some other kind of path that is cut in the woods that isn't the path that I'm on. And so you know, I have to take the book out, get my glasses out, you know, and try to remember if there isn't a mark right there. And so I found it helpful to ski with the trail chiefs because they get to see it from that perspective. Oh, it's beautiful. Snow is sticky, deep, but the sun just came out. It's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Trail's well marked. It's really fun. That was a head of a downhill. That was nice. It's absolutely stunning out here. I hope we'll go back the other way. No. Voice and the Gremlins. I, I, that's the title that just came to me as I was hiking up. Could be the title of a book. Uh, and, and Wild Voice is the cover. And then the Gremlins are each of the individual pages. <laughs> the Gremlins that live inside our head and, you know, tell us what not to do or what we can't do or shouldn't do things that make us fearful, fear, impatience, aggression, all the negative things that seem to be directed by an internal voice who's, you know, maybe trying to figure it out for us, but <laughs> they all have, they all have their own specialty. Like they all are really good at something, you know, like fear at saving, at saving you, but it doesn't have, you know, low medium settings it's just totally on high all the time so it kind of needs to sit in the back <sighs> I like it I like it wild voice and the gremlins <laughs> so clarity's when I was thinking about today I did a I did a morning meditation guided which is my favorite on um, I don't know, something positive. I can't remember the title, but it, it talked about, um, it was sort of like chakra based, generic, you know, just a few spots. And one was um, just repeating in my mind the word clarity, just, you know, breathing in and out clarity. And then in my sort of core, it was ease. That one felt so good because I could imagine ease as I was breathing it in and out easily. Um, and then, I can't remember the other one. <laughs> Those were the two really important ones for me, clarity and ease that just felt so right for me today. So, mm -hmm. And I don't need anything 
for clarity. Actually, what I need is a lack of a lot of things. The gremlins, a lack of them, a lack of the gremlins for clarity. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I gotta go. The mountain's calling. <laughs> awesome. Made it to the top of the mountain. Had a beautiful hike up on my skis. I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna take my skins off while we're talking so I don't chill down. I was thinking about the gremlins on the way up and how how strong their voice is. Um, but the cool thing is, and it's taken me a long time to it's taken me a long time to discover this, is that it's a cho it's a choice. I have a choice to listen to the gremlins and put them in charge, or or not. They don't have to be in charge. <laughs> and it takes, it takes a lot of practice. Um, but whenever, whenever I practice putting them in a, in the back seat, you know, like right here, I can see you in the rear view mirror. I know where you are when I need you. Um, they don't have they don't have like a position of power, um, then my wild voice is, is the voice I hear because they're quiet, they're asleep. Um, and I can also choose for my wild voice to be asleep and to listen to the gremlins. <laughs> Shouldn't, couldn't. Can't, won't, don't, afraid, 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 afraidy, scaredy. Oh my, oh my. You know? And uh, it never really works out super well for me when I listen to those voices because it has the effect of um, keeping me from doing and discovering and exploring and having adventure and being well in mind, body, and spirit. So... I just, uh, I would much rather listen to my wild voice than something that's whiny and nagging and no fun. Okay, time to ski down while there's still a little bit of light. It was beautiful coming up. I thought about clarity quite a bit. And I feel more clear about that right now. It's been a good hike.